you know, uh, this is actually kind of a great lead into yeah, our next great story. It's, you know, yeah. a, a lot of this comes down to to psychology and kind of kind of basic psychology in mm -hmm. some ways. Uh, you know, psychology is really an important element in organizational excellence uh, for managers in particular. The ability to face one's fears, uh, develop resilience, and adapt yeah. to change fosters success for the company. I and mean, we were just kind of talking about that. The elephant in the room is a good example of that. Yep. Uh, and also, by the way, success for the employees as well. And the managers. And, and the managers. Mm -hmm. So returning to the show uh, to discuss the ideas is executive coach, uh, business consultant, and author of the book, The Management Employee Development Review. We have with us Kelly Graves. Hi, Kelly. Good morning, hey, guys. Buddy. How are you doing? Yeah, nice to morning. see you again. Good to see you. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it has been a while. So, so what's new? How you been? I've been doing well. I've yeah. been doing a lot of marketing yeah. and uh, working with clients, and so things are going well. Yeah. Well, yeah. we well as Dirk mentioned, kind of in that in that lead, and I mean, really, we're talking about the idea, and you talk about it a lot with with mm -hmm. Carol Dweck's work. Right. We're trying to foster some some mindsets that really lead to growth for right. for the people. Um, and we notice, you know, you talk about doing the marketing, we mm -hmm. notice that there's a lot out there for people that talk about developing managers. Everybody wants right. to be a manager development person mm -hmm. and managers want to develop, but developing their people is one that maybe is overlooked sometimes, but that really is kind of where the rubber meets the road, right? It really is, it. yeah. Yeah, the manager, a lot of times what I found is the manager will read books, go to workshops, uh, attend a convention, and they have the theory and they've got the concepts, but they're not actually transferring those to behaviors. Mm -hmm. And so they're not talking with the employee, getting the employee involved. And you know what I like to do is ask the employee, you know, how do you think we should solve this problem? Get their ideas because I found that with good employees, they're going to come up with the same solutions that you have. And when you do that, you know, people typically um, support that which they help create. Mm -hmm. And so by involving them, now you have a nice dialogue. You have a lot more trust. You have some good communication. You get to find out if they truly understand the concept or not, and that's what a true leader and a manager does, is involve their people. Mm -hmm. Even even involving them in the process of correction. I mean, oh, you, know, yes. you, you talk about this yeah. a lot, this three-day rule that you have, where mm -hmm. you know, you're gonna you know, sometimes have to have tough conversations, and right. learning to have those conversations is a, is a real skill, and if you do it the right way, though, mm -hmm. you really can save a lot of people from not having to leave a company, not having to be terminated. Right, yeah, what I run into is people don't have the firm conversations soon enough and frequently enough. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times they, they try to have um, too easy of a conversation instead of just being, I call it brutally honest. It's best to be brutally honest up front. And you're actually trying your best to save that employee by being brutally honest up front. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, and, and uh, Gwendolyn's, Gwendolyn's story, you're probably li listening yeah. to that. You know, she talks about implementing, implementing change. And not, mm -hmm. you know, not everybody wants change. And kind of her, her take on that is you don't want to force change mm -hmm. on people. But is that, is that realistic? I mean, if something needs to change, is there a way to get employees to change without kind of, I don't know, mandating it and say you're going to do this. I mean, it, it seems like that's kind of a, a tightrope to, to walk of, of getting them involved willingly versus like forcing it down their throats. I mean. Right. Yeah. There are certain corporations that have a history of really shoving things down people's throats. And if you have that kind of demographic working for you, people are used to it. But I found in today's work environment where employees, especially now, they have lots of options. And if they don't like that, they want to be involved. And the number one thing that employees want is involvement. They want to be recognized. And so let's say that the three of us were leader of a corporation, uh, presidents, vice presidents, and we had ideas on how we need to change the organization. I guarantee you that if we were to pose that to small groups, put people in, in three and five person groups and pose them the same questions, they would come up with very, very similar ideas that we have. Mm -hmm. And since they helped create it, now we have a dialogue between the employees and the executive team. We come up with those problems and those solutions together. And now we start, we have synergy. Okay, so that's how you get them to buy in. And whether it's a, a company with three people, 300, 3,000, you just break those teams into smaller and smaller and smaller teams. And so now we're getting involvement and the people feel like they're 
like that's, they're being heard. That's interesting. You, you just said something I never really thought about, but it makes sense. Usually if there's a problem to solve, mm -hmm. there's some very obvious ways to do it. Right. Pretty much obvious to everybody. Yeah. So you're right. I mean, so if the three of us come up with, oh, this is a change we have to make, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. If we ask that group of people, they're probably thinking the same yeah. thing, but now we've asked them, mm -hmm. basically, I mean, to put it in <laughs> probably not so polite terms, we've basically just had them say the same thing that we thought all along, but we've involved them, so now now all is good. I mean, it, it's, a, it's... It really is the same thing, <laughs> but I guarantee you, if we were to take the approach, we come up with the ideas, and we try to shove it down their throat, we'll be here for years. Right, exactly. Yeah, Whereas yeah. if we take mm -hmm. the hours or days even that it takes to do it this way, yeah. we're gonna get there a lot faster. So we go slower in the beginning, but then we come out of the turn much faster. Because everybody feels like they've, they, they've come up with the... And, 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 and they really did. And, well, and I guess sometimes yeah. it's like we may have, they may agree on the same, you know, the general thrust of the mm -hmm. idea of the change, right. but they may have some tweaks to it that we never thought of that actually add value to, let's say, the overall plan, uh, change plan. Right, we have to come up with the, the large overall um, strategic plan and then when we come down to implementation that's something yeah. else entirely and again we want to go through the same process how should we implement this in your department right. because you know your department and your specific job better than I do I'm sitting in the executive suite and you're down on the shop floor you're gonna understand what those challenges are and so what we want to do is duplicate this um, solution all the way down the road you know, if you don't, don't do it right, there's a phrase that you use that I, I've read in your work that mm -hmm. I always resonated with me. People go underground. They do. You know, and, and where they, they kind of, they kind of... <laughs> yeah, we'll do it our way anyway. Yeah, yeah they right. kind of <laughs> circumvent the thing because they're so sure that, that their way is right. Mm -hmm. And if you don't, you know, involve them early on in the process of reinventing a process or, or to improve their work, they're going to go underground. And it, and many, even many good managers yeah. don't recognize when somebody's going underground because right? they'll, they'll shine you on, they'll say right. all the right things, mm -hmm. and then you're like, well, why is this changing? And you right. notice that they are really doing it their way because right. they want to do it their way. So how do, you, how do you realize when that's going on? The basis of any good relationship is trust and communication. Mm -hmm and it doesn't change when you work with an organization. What happens is people want to get to the solution quick because we're all in firefighting mode. Mm -hmm. And so we want to just do it quick instead of doing it right. Mm -hmm. And so the way we've got to approach is what we've been talking about. It's, mm -hmm. it's the same thing. Yeah. So, so whether you want to shove it down their throat, just know that that's not going to work. Yeah. I mean, like, what, what's the saying? It's like, you know, you can, you, you, you don't have time to do it right, but you have time to do it again. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly, exactly. And that's what happens. Right. And that's what I'm trying to preach and scream from the mountaintop, is if we use psychological methods, we can really involve our people and get twice as much done in half the time mm -hmm. if we just use human behavior yeah. as our guide. Yeah. Um, um, Kelly, what, what's sort of, in, in the past year, the, the amount of time since we, we saw you, last. What are some of the key things that you're seeing in your consulting business? Maybe it's problems or changes that you've noticed in, in the last year? Hmm. With my last client, they were really focused on doing things the right way. They wanted to put the money into what we were doing is transitioning from second generation people to third generation mm -hmm. owners. And what they wanted to do is not only teach those owners how to be how to be owners, but how to teach the organization to really follow them as leaders. And what they were doing, instead of waiting for it to get broken, they were putting money into investing into their future. And that's what companies do not do, whether it's a family business that does $35 million a year or $350 million a year. You really have to get that next generation ready to lead your organization. And that doesn't take three or five years. It takes a couple of decades. And so as soon as you get those people in your organization, start introducing them to each department. Get them to work in each department so they fully understand the organization. And they don't need to stay there for a long time, maybe six to 12 months in each each major department and doing the different jobs within that so by the time they move up to the c-suite they're ready to really start learning how to be strategic and running the organization do you think more and more companies are, are realizing the need to do this now I think they really are uh, the way of doing business where it was in the 60s and 70s where you know they were just told what to do I think people and organizations really do have to change and so I think more and more of them are saying okay what can we do to really change this and that's why people um, hire me is because of the back the background in psychology instead of just like an MBA right. mm -hmm. yeah. 
So Kelly, we talked about the marketing a little bit. So mm -hmm. now we're, we've been working with you and our readers should know this. Mm -hmm. uh, your book has been out for a little bit now, but right. people can get your book if they want by going to the article that we just ran and it's mm -hmm. actually, I think, on the landing page. Uh, yeah, the article's on the landing page and the link to the book is to the in book. the article. <laughs> you can get a free copy of the book yeah. right now if you want to check that out and, and you can work through Kelly on that. Um, actually, go to the article and and check that out, it's right below the landing page right down there. And um, we also mentioned right before the show that you're actually doing a webinar on uh, yeah, internal business solutions, yes, is that the? Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. internal yeah. business solutions on Facebook, so you can look that up on Facebook and you'll find Kelly's picture there right. on the Facebook page and uh, information about how to, how to register for that webinar coming yeah. up next week. Uh, well, how, yeah. do, how do they find you on Facebook? Uh, um, just said internal business solutions oh, okay, okay. Com. Yep. Okay. And uh, and then the name of the webinar is Leadership Secrets for Executives. So I'll be going into detail about, one, not only how to be a leader, but how do you deal with the stress and anxiety of being a leader? Yeah, yeah. this is okay. important stuff. Yeah. Great. Well, thanks, Kelly. Right. Thanks. thanks for being here. Great Good seeing you back. again. We'll, 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 bring you, we'll bring you back again soon. All right. That was Kelly Graves.